sake, I will choose to believe that. If it will excuse me, I have important work to do. Yes, thanks, and uh, goodbye. Hello again. Persistent. Mm. I actually admire that quality a great deal. It is underrated, in my opinion. Well, fever dream or no, if the Paxil Tech is going to be hanging around, I suppose I should tell it my name. I am Rothinder Achimold. Hello. Oh, it is struggling. Poor thing. Hmm. The Paxoltec dream creature may do as it pleases. Walt has more important things to consider. A pleasant jet. Surprisingly so. Indeed. Thanks and goodbye. It 
cannot be helped, can it? The curiosity. It is killing the Paxotec as surely as it is killing me. Knowledge is the only cure. This mural here on the cave wall, can it comprehend the meaning? A trick question, of course. I have dedicated my life to learning so that I may find the answers I seek and put the pieces together. After years and years of searching this jungle, I have finally found proof of what I knew all along. Of what it asks. <laughs> proof of all that matters in the whole world. Proof that the lost tribe of the Pan does exist. See, I have found the location of their civilization. It is no less than miraculous. Ah, I have gotten ahead of myself, have I not? I do apologize. My manners are not what they once were. I have been alone a long while now. A very long while. <clears throat> what uh, brings the parcel tech here? How can Walt be of service? If it is looking to spend, I have a few valuable items I may be willing to part ways with. Funding for my research must be procured by whatever means necessary. It is as good a time as any to stock up. It is leaving. How odd. The wandering Baxel Tech returns. As anticipated. If it is in need of a friend, Walt could ooh, perhaps step in? Yes, uh, perhaps indeed. Ah, I thought it would never ask. This ancient mural is a gift from the lost tribe of the Pan. My long sought after proof of their existence. They were real, and they landed here. Far removed from Genus and her thin fruit. Imagine the freedom, the adventure, the fear, yes, but also the exhilaration. They were not unlike myself. Adventurers to the core. If only I had descended from one of their lot instead. Ah, but no time for pointless musings. From this mural, paired with my own independent studies, we can deduce that their ships were separated from the rest. They were assumed killed by the ocean's fury. But in truth, they arrived here, and etched out a living as best they could under Thalos's mighty leadership. King Thalos was the son of Kolket, and the Lost Tribe's leader. When they landed ashore, he led them into the underground tunnels and helped redefine their way of living to survive. It is a nasty jungle, as the Baxotec has no doubt noticed. But tragedy struck the tribe, as it does. My ancestors fell ill, beginning with brave Thalos, afflicted by the same disease that destroyed the ancient Pan society and forced them to abandon their homeland. I do not know what happened next. Not yet. But I will know soon enough. Mark my words, Baxotec. This is history in the making. The Paxotec must clean out its ears, hmm? When the ancient Pan left their homeland to escape the plague, several ships were separated from the rest and landed here. Thelos was their leader and helped build a new society, but he soon fell ill with that same plague. <laughs> its sense of things is keen. Indeed I am, shall we say, a distinct Pan. A commoner who loathed the idea of a soldier's life and dreamed of finding the lost tribe and perhaps others like myself. I grew up hearing stories about the lost tribe and was always told they were merely a child's tale. Well, 
I knew better, of course. My heart told me otherwise. It's much like the power of the life song, which can sing life into the lifeless. No flesh, no blood required. It is a song I can nearly, nearly hear, but not quite. Yet I search, ear to the ground. <laughs> no one believes me about that either, of course. I have always been an outsider because of his beliefs, not fitting in anywhere with anyone. I am strange as the Baxter Tech so aptly observed. And so I took quite well to years of solitude, just me and my research. I became accustomed to the loneliness. Now would be an appropriate time for the Baxter Tech to make a purchase in support of Walt's research. Where should I look next?
That's it.
All right.
Let's go.
Brethren. Oh! oh. Hello! <laughs> it is nice to see a familiar face around these parts. Even if it is a strange and hornless one. Hmm? It has arrived at an opportune time. See, I have found another mural. This one is more than I could have ever dreamed of. This discovery is downright exhilarating. The implications, the possibilities. It's overwhelming in the best of ways. <clears throat> Excuse me. I <laughs> have a tendency to get carried away. Is my Paxil Tech friend in need of something? What is intriguing the Paxil Tech, I wonder? Listen well. 
Othello survived the plague that had long haunted the pan. After falling ill, he began hearing an unusual sound that seemed to come from the ground itself. Music. Strange music, with no instruments or voice to carry it. He ventured out to find the source, but what he found was her, Lydusa, a goddess of stone. In exchange for a year of companionship away from his people, she promised to cure him and give him the means to cure the others. He agreed. In his time away, the plague had ravaged his tribe. But he was able to save those who remained and start over anew. The goddess had granted him an unusually long life and he ruled over the Pan for several prosperous centuries. The Pan worshipped their new goddess, building a temple and singing her praises. Here is the exciting part. It is said that she grew fond of the Pan and actually taught them how to use her power over the living stones. Watch that fleshy mouth, Paxoltek! Huh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Carry it away. Carried away. The living stones are real. The result of the same precious life song I have searched for all my days. I knew I was meant to find both the song and the tribe. Now I understand why. Walt is a servant of fate. Does its furless skin have chills yet? In time, it will understand. I know this to be true. The power I speak of is great. Lydusa selfishly kept much of it to herself, but she at least taught the Lost Tribe to hear the music of the stones and control them in some small capacity. Naturally, they craved more. As do I, my friend. As do all of us with the heart of an adventurer. I... Yes. Yes, it does. Everything, as it were. See, I have been chasing this dream since I was a child. I was a commoner, born for nothing but bloodshed and servitude. But I did not want that for myself. <laughs> I wanted to believe the Lost Tribe was real, that they were out there somewhere. So I studied, became as clever and useful as I could, and at a young age, I was chosen to serve Genus herself. After many years of loyalty, I was assigned to a mission to explore the uncharted jungle. It was the chance I had been waiting for. So, here I am, chasing my dreams across cave and jungle. And finally, finally, I am nearing the answers I have long sought. I am on the trail, my friend. They could still be out there, or if not, Perhaps the secret of their power over stones. This could change my life, change our whole society. Oh, but one step at a time, I must not get ahead of myself. There is still much to unravel. I can hardly stand the excitement. Ah, it must listen well, yes. When the ancient Pan left their homeland to escape the plague, several ships were separated from the rest and landed here. Thelos was their leader and helped build a new society, but he soon fell ill with that same plague. Understood, my friend. Will that be all? I hope my friend's journey is as fruitful as my own.
Damn. Is it over? Great. More bad news. Steadfast Lydusa, 
spirit of the land, nymph of the glittering grotto. When the ground beneath you shakes and quakes and tosses you fro. When boulders tumble and crush from above. When the deep dark caves twist and lead you astray. That's Lydusa's wrath. Now speak, before I petrify your flesh to never-moving stone. Why do you trespass here? The stone flesh you feel within, turning your inside cold and still. That's my curse, the touch of Lydusa. So you will answer my questions and do as I say. Tell me why a wicked beast intrudes upon this secret place. Exploration is thin-veiled shelter for intrusion. You wish to steal from me, like all the other wicked beasts. But beasts will take anything from Lydusa, not anymore. For what's most precious to me has already been taken. The wicked beasts, the hooved ones, they stole Lydusa's precious thing. Without it, I can't tell my singing stones to cease their song of wrath. Yes, the singing stones belong to Lydusa. Once they sang only sweetly. It was my magic that first sung them to life. A song to make them twirl and dance like wind-caught sand. But the wicked beasts twisted my sweet song to screams. I screamed and screamed. Now, poor Lydusa has lost something precious. The beasts stole it and locked it away. I can't sing without it. You, hopeless beast, will find my precious thing and return it to me. Only then will I free you from Lydusa's stone touch curse. to me, and it was sundered, stolen. Without it, I am shadow split. I am not me. I am not Lydusa. When you find it, beast, you will know that it's mine, that it is precious. Now go, before you become petrified and useless. Ask. I have not spoken to anyone. In so long. What happened to them? What happened to them? Ask their corpse dust what happened to them. The wicked beast took what was not theirs. Now their squished flesh rots into loam. Lydusa was kind. She gave and gave. Wisdoms, magics. Even the sweet, lilted song of the stones. But it was not enough for the beasts. Never enough. Not even in the end. Wicked, wicked beasts. They deserved their deaths and more. This wistful, empty hollow was the throne room of Hoof King Thalos. But I didn't visit him here. No. Once, I couldn't stand the mollycoddles of the mortals. Yet I sense him here still. His life's imprint, drifting in the dust memory of this hollow. So I stay. My Thalos, son of Colquet and king of the Hooved. He arrived at this land lost and blighted and one day stumbled upon my sleepy grotto. He sung me the sad song of his people, fractured from their herd. Such a poor and pitiful beastie he was. Sweethearted Lydusa cured him of his plague blight in exchange for a year and a day. A year and a day spent with me. Is it? I've taken naps quite longer. How fleeting mortals are. Thalos and I spent each day together. 
I taught him the song of the stones. And we sang and danced atop the clifftops. From dawn till dusk. Our bond peaked higher than the mounts, more and deeper than the depths. A bond no other beast could ever understand. Oh, how I did not wish him to go. But he was a hoof king, and his people were his heart's grotto. He returned to them, and as a final gift, I taught him the cure touch for his people's blight. He built me a temple within his golden city, and he would visit me again and again, for I would not allow his life song to fade. But then, he was taken from sweet Lydusa, taken, stolen, taken by the wicked beasts, terrible wicked beasts. I will speak of them no more. The only one here, but not the only spirit. My sisters have all scatter danced to the wind to spread flower bloom and newborn springs. Only steadfast, lonesome I do so remains. I... I can't. I cannot go, beast. Not until I take back what is mine. Not until I'm me again, unbroken from all these pieces. Made whole. Until then, I remain here. So that is the dreadful stench drenched upon you. Hoofed ones, here. No, no, no. They should all be gone. My singing stones will crush this wonder hoof. <laughs> this beast is as naive as a newborn pebble. The hoofed ones are all muck and dirt water on their inside. Soft, sweet Lydusa taught them the song of the stones. Singing stones to heat their food pots, cradle their little ones, carry their packs. Yet still they took, still they stole, still they hurt. I too trusted them once. I thought them harmless. But only lovely Thalos was a gem carved from a different rock. And the wicked ones took him too. This Wanderhoof had dare not intrude upon my Dusa's secret place. Or my singing stones will shred him through. No more. No more. So long, beast. I won't lift my curse touch until you find my precious thing. They had no choice. Sometimes one must do what must be done. They had no choice. Hmm? Oh, ha. forgive me, my friend. I have a lot on my mind. I found another piece of the story, and I am another step closer to the truth. It is tragic. Bloody. A betrayal, some might say. But they would be wrong. That is just the way of things. Trust me. I know all too well. Anyway, does the Puxel Tech need something? I have new items on offer. I hope I have something of use for its journey. 
What is on its Paxultec mind? A priesthood was formed in service to the goddess, and she taught them alone to wield the power of the living stones. A simple things only, from what I can gather. Heating pots on command, lulling young ones to sleep and things of the like. But there was so much more potential. This divine power was right at their fingertips, but she selfishly kept it to herself. It must have been maddening. Yes, I'm certain it was. They made a plan to trap her. One day a year, she took mortal form and required Thalos to lie with her. Our noble king was dubbed the Bloodless King because he never sired a child. It was because of her. He was under her spell. She was less powerful in her mortal form. So when that night came around, they used their own ancient magics and captured her. Thelos was enraged and fought back, killing his own kind. Yeah, they had no choice but to capture him as well. Thelos was driven mad by the goddess. He would not listen to reason. So they imprisoned him and took control of the kingdom. Knowing the goddess was fond of her royal pet, they bartered his life in exchange for the secrets of her power. They got what they wanted, what they needed to safeguard their society. Using her power, they were able to create living constructs to do their bidding. And so, the pen went from living like savages to an era of swift advancement. Imagine having such power in the palm of one's hand. Power like that could change the fate of our people, even those deemed unworthy of the Thane fruit. It is tragic, but that is the way of history, of the world. One must rise from tragedy, stronger than before. The secret of this power must still be around here somewhere. I can feel it. Trust me, my friend. This day will live on in the annals of history forever and ever. Why? Why? Because I have sacrificed everything for this knowledge. For this power that I am on the cusp of unearthing. This could change everything for me, for all commoners, for all of Yesha. It has no idea. Dear, what I have endured to get here. The suffering, the loneliness, the ridicule. How the Lamia laughed and laughed at poor Walt. It was humiliating. And then there were those wasted, tortuous years serving Genus. That cruel tyrant who none of us chose to do anything she asked of me. Anything. I did everything she asked of me, and she asked a great deal. Whenever there was blood to be spilled, there I was in the night. Dagger in hand, important figures, commoners like me, even children. It was the only way to prove my loyalty. I did not mean to. I I did not want to, but I had to do it. That was the only way she would ever trust me enough to explore the uncharted jungle. It was for the greater good. It really was. I just... wish I could forget their eyes. The look of betrayal in their eyes as they breathe their last breath. As long as I live, I never want to see that look again. My friend. My first and only friend. He must think Walt is a monster. And perhaps I am. But my heart is true. If nothing else, believe that much. 
<sighs> if I must. When the ancient Pan left their homeland to escape the plague, several ships were separated from the rest and landed here. Thelos was their leader and helped build a new society, but he soon fell ill with that same plague. He came upon a stone goddess, Ledusa, who cured him in exchange for a year with her. Ledusa also gifted him long life, so when he returned, he cured the survivors and ruled for centuries. The band loved him and worshipped Ledusa. Walt, we'll not give up. Please, friend, I hope it will support my research if it is able. Believe in me. Someone must. Is that a pooch? Come here, come on, come on, boy. 
Oh, God, it's been ages since I saw one. Man's best friend right there. Wait, what the? Well, I'll be damned. Either you're a human, or I ate some bad mushrooms. I haven't seen a fellow Earthling in decades. All right, explain yourself, or I start shooting. Uh, I'm asking the questions around here, kid. Where did you come from? And what are you doing in my home base? Talk. And if I like what you say, you may just walk out of here alive. So get talking. Then you are from Earth. I knew it. Wonders never cease. At ease. I'm Private Jack Driver. Now, this is gonna sound crazy, but I've been stranded here on Yesha for over a century. I may be an old man now, but I was actually a kid when I first came here. <laughs> New recruit. Fresh out of boot camp. Life has been... trying, to say the least. I would be dead if not for my survival training. Hell, you throw me for a loop here. I feel like I'm dreaming, but... Well, those types of dreams usually involve go-go boots. Mr. Sandman has lost his touch if I'm asleep. Get in line, kid. The white in my gruff and my horrible back pain tell me I've been waiting a lot longer for answers than you have. I'll go first. It wasn't a question, but glad you're making it easier on yourself. Now tell me, is America still safe? Still free? Did, did we beat the Ruskies to the moon? Are, are there flying cars or anything like that? Come on, lay it on me. I don't know what to say. Yeah. Thanks for telling me the truth, I guess. Deal's a deal. What are your questions? Unless your friend had survival training, he's probably dead if he was unlucky enough to wind up here. I haven't seen a human aside from you in ages, though. So, uh, try to keep hope alive. Not a fact. Well, well. Didn't know it was a lady friend we were talking about, or I'd have been more... delicate. You sweet on her, or what? <laughs> I'm just teasing. Hang loose, soldier. Well, this ain't story hour, so I'll try to keep it brief. When I was a new recruit, I was sent here on a recon mission with my squad. We were captured by the Pan. Thanks to our captain, we managed to escape. But we were separated. We never saw our commanding officer again. He must have died and stayed dead. But the rest of us... Well, we died and then somehow reappeared at the stone we used to travel here from Earth. We were the same, but older. Bizarre, I know. Long story short, the stone stopped working, so we were trapped here on Yesha for good. We would have died if not for our training, and the things our captain had taught us about this world. Damned if I know. We were soldiers, not scientists. I bet Captain Ford could have figured it out. But like I said, we'd already lost him. I'd have done anything to fix that thing. But no dice. We were stranded in this hellhole. Over time, the rest of my squad died one too many times and never showed up again. Eventually, you age out of that trick, I guess. Hey, I'm no spring chicken, so I'm likely on my last leg myself. That isn't funny. Don't you dare sully the memory of our dearly departed commanding officer. He was the greatest man I've ever known, aside from my pops. He deserves better than that. I never told you his first name. Holy smoke. Today just keeps getting weirder and weirder. Well, hell, we thought he was dead. So I bet he assumed the same. That or he escaped, but then couldn't get back through that broken stone. I know he would have come back for us if he could have. I can't believe he's still alive. If I ever reunite with that brave bastard, I'm gonna punch him right in the kisser and then give him the biggest hug he's ever had. Sounds like you've done a lot of traveling. You know, when I was recruited, I thought I'd see the whole world. Never imagined I'd wind up leaving the whole world behind. I'll admit, I miss being around humans. It gets lonely. Oh, I 
give anything to sleep in a soft bed again. Or sit by a fireplace. Do they still have those? With a hot cup of coffee? Shit. I don't usually let myself think about coffee. Hmm. Some wounds run too deep. Right. If things are as bad as you said, I guess I shouldn't have assumed stuff like that still exists. Never mind. It's... It's... Nothing important. A lot. I used to write down things that I remembered so I wouldn't forget them. But, well, I got too depressing. I remember seagulls fighting over crusts of bread on the beach. Red, white, and blue flags waving proudly over perfectly manicured lawns. I remember mop tops on television making the girls go wild. <laughs> Birthday candles and the smell from Ma's kitchen when she made Thanksgiving dinner. Stacks of new jeans in the stores and kids laughing in the park. And my sweetheart, who I left behind. Her name was Dawn. I, I, I remember her a lot. The smell of her perfume. The way she'd blush when I'd compliment her dress. Her red Mary Janes. She, she's dead by now, but believe you me, that chick was far out. One last thing before we part ways. Tell it to me straight. Do you know of a way to get back home? Now, I'm not big on asking for favors. I've been in survival mode the vast majority of my life. But I'm asking you this. When you go back, will you take me with you? Words can't express what I'm feeling right now. Thank you. In fact, here, take this. A little token of my appreciation. It's not much, but it's saved my hide more times than I can count. Won't be needing it anymore, so I want you to have it. Now, go and do whatever it is you came here to do. I'd go with, but uh, truth be told, I'm a rickety old man now. I'd only slow you down. Finish your mission, and come back. I'll be waiting. Let me know if I can help with anything. Remember, the mission always comes first.
This looks important.
Better than looking.
This isn't over. It can't be over. Not well. Not well at all. Ask and be done with it. It is hideous. Difficult to look at. Uh, being alone with this new truth has been... It has been... Just know that I am glad for the company. What did I find? If it must know, proof of heinous betrayal and cruel misuse of power. And, and the downfall of my lost tribe at her despicable hands. Once the pen priesthood had pried every last secret of the living stones from the captured goddess Lydusa, they granted her the mercy of truth. A bitter truth that would ruin everything they'd worked so hard to build. See? Thelos had long ago died from injuries sustained during his capture. A tragic and unintentional loss as he was well loved by his people. But the goddess went mad! In her fury she broke free from her prison! Then she... She... She murdered them in the cold. Cruel rage, she turned the pan's living constructs against them. And together, they swept through that utopian kingdom and decimated the lost tribe. Only the priests remained, confined to the throne room. Drenched in blood, she demanded Thalos' body, but it had long since been burned. They could not comply even if they wished to, but she did not care. She is incapable of such emotion. She killed them! And that was that. The end of my lost tribe. They're gone. Destroyed. Forever. All because of a failed goddess who did not think us worthy of her power. She must pay. It is wrong. Wrong! <laughs> Walt is speechless. My lost tribe is no more. Thalos was unintentionally killed in his struggle with the priests. When they eventually told Ledusa, the captured goddess, she escaped and destroyed them all. Every last pen was ripped to shreds without a trace of mercy. Even the ones who had faithfully worshipped her all that time. Those who had nothing to do with the priests and their schemes. The younglings, the elders. None survived! All because she did not believe us worthy of her power! 
Must we then always be treated like dirt by the ones who rule over us? Is there no other fate for my kind? I swear I will make her pay. There... There must be a way. There it is. That is the end of the story. The end of Walt's dreams, the end of everything! Please, do not make me speak of it again. I am... unwell. What does it think is the matter? My hopes and dreams have crumbled and fallen. The Lost Tribe is no more, and the secrets of her power are lost. I will never escape. It is either a life of loneliness in the jungle, or of deplorable servitude back home. I cannot go back! I will not go back to that life of misery! But I cannot hide in the wreckage of the Lost Tribe either, barely scraping by. There is nothing left for me. My dream is dead. I am a walking corpse. Truth be damned! I was not doing this for truth. I wanted to find the Lost Tribe and join their society. And once I found out about their power over stones, I had foolishly hoped to overthrow Genus and her tyrannical hold over the pan. I dreamed of a Yesha where every pan could rise and fall based on their own merits, where they're free to choose what shape their life will take, where there is no cabal of immortal elites who treat us like expendable pawns. But it is over. Finished. The Lost Tribe is gone, and the Goddess, her secrets are her own once again. It is hopeless. Ask or do not, buy or do not, it does not matter anymore. Buy or do not, it does not matter anymore. It is a voxel deck. But more than that, it is Walt's friend.
Is that all you got?
That's over.
This looks important.
Get them.
Medusa back together. All my shards united again. I, I am whole. I, I am me. How long was poor Lydusa's shatter split? So long. Too long. I recall it now. I was waiting for my darling Thalos. On each ruby moon, he made a pilgrimage to my temple and sent all the priestlings away. The night belonged to only he and I, Thalos and Lydusa. But that night, the terrible priestlings betrayed him. They told Lydusa they would kill her Thalos if I didn't obey. So I did. They locked me in this cold, empty temple. Made me sing the stones to life. More. And more. More still. Yet I obeyed. Anything to save my Thalos. But Lydusa was a fool. The priestlings had already killed her precious Thalos. They lied to me. So I shed this fragile mortal body. And I... I remember little after that. Only the screams and the wrath rattling and grinding inside. It's quiet now. But the hurt... It still hurts. My Thalos is gone, beast. What should this poor godling do? I will. I will. I'll remember him and sing. I'll teach the stones the song of Thalos. And these lands shall sing of him forever and ever. I do hope you can forgive Lydusa. She... I was not myself. I'll remove my stone touch curse from your poor squishy flesh. Now I can leave this guild cage of cruel, cherished memories. And cherish them I will, for they are all precious. Even the cracks and the shards, the broken, painful pits, and the pieces that are missing still, they too are precious, because they're me. They will always be me. And I sense something else. You seek to save something precious, too, don't you? I can hear it in your life song's hum, a tune harmonious with my own. This spirit of the land would aid you. I will grant you a precious piece of myself. Thank you, sweet beast. I hope you find what you seek.